there everybody, this is Alan, Alan Walls Photography. Today we're going to play around with some uh, water drops. Why not? Be right back. Keep talking sweet, keep sugar raw, baby. I got you good. Good to have everybody back. Thank you for everybody that's been in touch and asking questions and subscribing to the channel makes my day when that happens and uh one piece of housekeeping business before um uh, before we get started today you remember you remember that video i did where i showed you how to make light modifiers for your speed lights well i have had so many people uh asking me to send them one that i've run out and i had made more than a dozen of these things, prototypes. Some of them pretty shabby, actually, but they all work. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, I guess people have started watching that video. And uh, everybody who has asked me until this video is going to get one. I'm going to have to make some more. But I had a young lady uh, get in touch with me from Australia this morning. <laughs> I wonder how much that's going to cost to ship. But uh, no, I'm a, I'm a man of my word. I said that if anybody wanted one of these, I would send them to them. And I am going to do exactly that. So uh, Ernest and uh, Lekka, you should have, well, Ernest, you should have yours pretty soon. Lekka, I don't know how long it takes uh, for a, a package to get to Queensland. Might be next Christmas. But uh, anyway, it is great having uh, you guys out there. I, I, it really, it really fills my heart with joy to uh, know that uh, uh, you're interested in these videos and, and what have you. Well, today's going to be fun. I've had a, a, a dreadful uh, couple of days. Um, I've, I've done three or four videos um, in the last week, and none of them I'm happy with. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to put any of them up until I've done a, a lot more work with them. So it's been a bit frustrating. So I thought I'll just do something fun today. And that's exactly what we're going to do. There's a story I've got to tell you first, though. Uh, several years ago, uh, I taught myself how to program those, uh, those tiny little computer chips. Those, uh, they're called Arduino. And um, yeah, I taught myself how to write the code and everything to have these little things um, work for me in different ways. And I built some high speed uh, sound triggers for my camera and it was all camera stuff that I made. But one of the things that I tried to make uh, was a uh, water drop uh, doohickey. And I spent a lot of time and a lot of money buying different parts and trying to put it together. And I never could get the thing to work worth a darn. Uh, so um, before I electrocuted myself, I uh, gave up on the plan. And uh, I got in touch with a chap in England uh, who makes these things. Uh, they're called Splash Art. Just the way it sounds, splash art. Joey's the name of the guy that makes them, and a uh, very personable chap. Um, I've been in touch with him a few times. Anyway, I bought this thing about a year ago, and uh, only used it a couple of times when I needed the effect for something uh, special. But I thought, you know, I need to pull that back out and uh, get it set up and put it through its paces. The beauty of water drop photography is, first of all, that the pictures are quite unique. And with enough practice and enough uh, imagination, you can make some breathtaking images. And the beauty of this is it's not just something that you, you set up and it does the same thing every time. It is incredibly versatile. There's tons of different ways that you can set up the equipment, the lighting, the camera, the drippy machine, and and every little change you make comes up with a, a just a ton of variations on the same theme. The idea, of course, is that there's a solenoid valve attached to a tank of liquid, and when you press a button, it 
gets your camera ready to take a picture and your camera gets the flash ready to take a picture and uh, then the machine will let loose a drop from the end of its nipple thing are you allowed to say that well it's made of brass i imagine i can say it uh, anyway it lets go of one drop and then a few milliseconds later it lets go of the second drop so when the first drop hits the water uh, it causes the the water in the vessel to shoot up just like it would you know you've seen drops of water falling and stuff a bit of water comes shooting up after it hits and the idea is this thing's so accurate that it'll let go a second drop at just the right time so that it hits the first one as it's coming back up again. And that gives you that flat, splashy kind of look. And um, I did a good job of explaining that. I wonder if I could get a job for Joey doing his advertising. Probably not. Probably not. I probably shouldn't even ask. So of all the things that you can change, well, you know, it made more sense to show you the setup and walk you through it show you how all that stuff works and uh, and then I'll explain how you can vary it. So I've got it set up on my uh, uh, dining room table. It's kind of a halfway dining room, halfway kitchen table right now where it is, but okay, let's go look at it. So that's the whole setup right there. And I'll walk you through each part, tell you what it is. That's a camera. Uh, I'm using, and I would, if you're going to try this stuff, I highly recommend you use a macro lens. This is my trusty Tamron uh, 90 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. It just gives the best water drop pictures, in my opinion. I recommend putting it on a sturdy tripod. If you are lucky enough to have one of these Benro three-way doodads, definitely use it. Get very accurate positioning of the camera. On top of the camera, I have got one of those Godox X-T1s or X-1s. Yeah, X-1. Uh, it's a trigger for my uh, speed lights. Uh, I just use these uh, inexpensive Godox speed lights. Uh, and this setup, you can do it with one, two, three, five, as many speed lights as you want. But for simplicity today, I'm going to do it with, uh, with just the one. The next thing in line is uh, my vessel. This is where the splash is going on. And you're probably thinking, or maybe not, why is that such a small little bowl thing? Well... The, the smaller the bowl, the easier it is to change out the liquid if it becomes discolored uh, or if you want to change its color or change liquids uh, rather than having a big bowl of the stuff. What's important is that it has a, 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 a nice big diameter, a nice big surface area. The more surface area you have, the more energy gets imparted into the spike of water that comes up after the first drop. So if you're dropping it into a very narrow container, you don't get quite as much um, splash up. Something like that anyway, it's physics, so don't ask me. This nifty little thing, I would like to say I invented it, but I, I didn't. It's a wooden skewer that you put kebabs on with a blob of that blue tack stuff that's not blue that I was telling you about last week. And what I do is I stick this to the bottom of my container, uh, just about ooh, a half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch in front of where my drops are hitting the water. Uh, and then I use it to manually focus the camera. Everything's manual. I'll come back and show you the camera settings in a second, but yeah, once the, the, um, once the focus is set up just in front of where the water drops, um, then you'll be, you'll be good to go. I've got it, uh, this little bowl sitting on a, um, it's actually an extension for my tripod. I probably shouldn't be getting it wet, but I couldn't find anything else except a toilet paper tube 
which would have probably eventually melted. So anyway, that's what that is. I like to use a dark tray or a plate at the bottom, something not too reflective uh, to catch the water that spills out of the thing as, as the experiment goes on. So just uh, this is a, a, a pie plate um, that I bought for this very purpose. Never made a pie in it, but uh, it's good for water drops. Um, there are so many different ways that you can do the, the lighting. Um, you, can, you can position speed lights on, on either side of your, I'm having trouble getting the thingy, to, there you go. You could put a speed light here and a speed light over here and, and aim at you know, complementary angles. But for water and uh, for some other liquids that I use, my favorite thing to do is, is to backlight it. It gives a really striking image. Uh, so dead in line with my camera is this pan with the water in it. And directly behind that is a piece of glass. This was a cheap piece of um, window glass that I got at Home Depot. Um, and I sprayed it uh, with some kind of glass frosting material. It didn't do a very good job, but uh, you don't want the glass to be reflective. And that's why I did that. Now, the idea is that the lighting is going to be diffused as it goes through that panel and backlight the water drop. So there's the camera. There's the water down there somewhere. There we go. And, and this is the, uh, the plate, uh, plate of glass. You can also buy this in acrylic that's already been frosted, but a sheet of acrylic frosted that size, you could buy 10 sheets of glass and a couple of cans of the spray. So I just did it myself. Uh, using my extraordinary woodworking skills, I built designed and built this complex uh, stand for the glass. I'm surprised Apple didn't ask me to do the uh, stand for their thousand dollar Mac Pro uh, because obviously I have what it takes to, to make stands. Now I have a single flash. It's a Godox V862 N. <laughs> Too many letters. Uh, the reason I'm using this one uh, is it's my newest one and it, it uses a rechargeable, uh, a big rechargeable battery pack and it lasts forever compared to the battery, a regular battery powered ones. Now you're probably saying that's a very nice store-bought diffuser you have on your flash, Alan. Um, and it, it is but it's because all of my really good homemade ones are in the mail to people who ask for one. So we're back to using the store-bought one. But this is the Adorama, uh, not Adorama. Um, gosh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. Dirt cheap. You can get three of them, I think, for $15, three different sizes. All it is is a is a tiny little soft box basically, but it does a great job here. It basically fills the panel with a subdued light and the backlighting effect is tremendous. We'll, we'll try several different lighting setups so you can see how they, they work. But really the, the fun of this is the experimenting. So let's look at the most important part of the gear, um, which, this is, this is the thing I was telling you about I bought from, uh, from England. It's called a, uh, a splash art. What, what it is is a plastic container for your liquid that normally has a, um, a valvey thing on top, but I usually don't use it except when I'm storing it. It's got a, gosh, what's it called? A um, uh, Marriott siphon I think it's called in the top so that stops air getting in or regulates the air getting in don't ask me that's physics too so anyway the the uh, water drains through this brass pipe uh, into this 
golden colored piece of machinery. You were thinking I was going to give you a scientific name for it. That That's where the solenoid motor is housed. And there's a, what it is, is this piece here, I think, is the solenoid itself. And a solenoid is just a motor that moves a rod backward or forward, depending on whether or not it's getting current. And the idea is that when you activate this thing, the solenoid pulls back and it allows just a single drop of water to get through this valve. And then the water comes out the nipple at the end. Um, and apparently from, uh, you know, from talking to Joey and reading about this, that, that's some pretty precision stuff. Not just any old valve will do it. And if you don't keep your nipple clean, uh, if you get any rust or, or uh, build up or residue on it, it'll, the water drops don't come out right and they'll stick to the end and do all kinds of bad things. The, uh, the stand is uh, reminiscent of my chemistry lab when I was a youngster. In fact, I think it is. It may well have been originally from my school. It's just a cheap lab stand. I have a, an anvil made of stainless steel that I put on it because as you can see, the thing would otherwise be a little forward heavy. That kind of keeps it stable. You can also clamp it to a table. And then the most confusing part of the setup is the splash art control box. I say confusing, once you know what everything does, it's not particularly confusing. But until that point, it's, uh, yeah, it's bewildering. What it is, uh, you have these four controls, and I'll explain to you what they control in just a second, and then a trigger button right here, and then a little flashy green light that tells you you just press the button, which I would think you would already know. There are no numbers on these dials, so they're rather cryptic in that respect. It would be nice if they did, so that, you know, I knew that my settings were five, six, five, and four or whatever, instead of, yeah, about there. Because uh, I always forget when I pull this thing out, I have to go through the process of figuring out where these buttons are positioned. Anyway, they are the, um, that's the size of the first drop. Changing the size of the first drop will change the size of the spike. Uh, that is the gap between drops, the amount of time before it lets go of the other one. And again, there's no units on it, so you don't know. You can't impress your friends by saying, oh yes, that second drop was 14 milliseconds after the first one, because you just have to guess. This is the size of the second drop. And if you can get the size of the first one, the size of the second one, and the timing just right, that's when you get the really spectacular collision photographs. This important button, probably the, the one that will give you the most headaches trying to figure out, is the delay that the machine builds in before sending the fire signal to your camera. And that's really important because this is just a matter of fractions of a second. So you have to get it just right so this is for fine tuning how long it takes your camera to fire. So we've come full circle back to, to camera. Well, you're probably wondering what the wires are. Uh, the, this wire on the left is to plug it in, plug it into the um, little uh, uh, transformer thing it comes with. The one in the middle Hmm. Oh yeah, that's the one that goes up to the solenoid and tells it when to fire. And then the one here, closest to me, is a uh, like an eighth inch stereo jack that goes directly into the, the remote. My hand's going numb from holding this, holding this cheap grimble. Uh, yeah, but you can see it plugs right into the to the 10-pin uh, connector on my D850. 
if you buy one of these things, it's important that you um, uh, that you tell Joey that that you uh, what camera you have, because he he sends these kits out with every connector that that, that you might need. But you have to tell him because, as you know, the the remote connector on this camera is different from my uh, D seventy five hundred, which which doesn't have the ten pin. And different from that 3400 we played with last week, because that one doesn't have any connector. So I guess you can't use it with this setup. All right, let's talk briefly about camera settings. Uh, as far as your shutter speed goes, just use your sync speed uh, for, for your camera. So that could be 160 for Canons, I think. It's 250 for some Nikons, 200 for others. Just find out what it is and use that. The, uh, the shutter speed is not gonna be what freezes the water drop. The water drop is gonna be frozen by the flash. And I'll get to that in just a second. So you'll find just going with uh, the regular sync speed. Now for um, your aperture, these splashes can spread out pretty far and you're using a macro lens. Uh, so uh, you know, depth of field is, is always a bit of a problem. So I try to maximize my depth of field. And you know, this is a fairly abstract um, imaging. We're not, people aren't gonna look at the shape of your water drop and say, oh, looks like you got some distortion in those droplets on the edges. Uh, no, it's not that kind of photograph. It's um, it's uh, not the same as taking a, a person's picture. You're taking a water drops picture, which they all look different anyway. I say all that to say that I like to set my aperture pretty tiny, usually around f14. I know that's very low, but uh, I, I really want the depth of field because the more of the the clean, sharp uh, water drops you can see, the more impressive the pictures are. Uh, ISO, set it to 100 or lower. Uh, if you want, you don't want to introduce noise into these pictures. Don't use high speed sync. Don't use live view. It messes it up completely. So you're gonna have to put the camera in, in manual and use the, uh, the regular viewfinder view. You can set up your focus that way, and you can even use your autofocus to set up the focus, but then turn it off. Once you have the thing uh, focused about, like I say, a quarter of an inch or so in front of the point where the water's uh, splashes are happening, then turn the focus off and just leave it right there. One of the most important settings uh, to bear in mind is. Um, your shutter release mode. If your camera, uh, if you shoot Nikon, I know it has it, but uh, uh, I don't know if Canon has this as an option or not, but if you can put your camera in mirror up mode. Mirror up mode uh, is a useful mode for cutting down on, uh, on excessive camera shake. Uh, from the mirror itself moving. I use it all the time in macro photography. Um, I'll, you know, you, with mirror up, you press the shutter release once and it raises the pent the mirror in front of the pentaprism. And then it waits for the shutter release signal, which is the second push of the button. And then when you push it the second time, it, it opens the shutter, but it doesn't cause all that vibration that the mirror can cause. Do you get what I'm saying? It's a pain because you have to uh, press the camera shutter between every shot. I'll show you how that works in a minute, but I'm constantly forgetting to do that. But uh, so put it in mirror up and then just be ready to prime the camera uh, between every shot. Um, I think that's it for the camera settings. I'm sure you'll tell me if I forgot anything. White balance balance it shoot raw and balance it later uh, you know do the white balance in uh, th this is artistic so you're going to want to have 
full control over the way the colors look. So setting up the white balance, you just put it on flash or fluorescent or whatever, well, you're gonna be using flash. So just put it on flash. Though if you forget to and you're shooting raw, it doesn't matter because I will change the white balance to change the creative effect with these water drops. Uh, so that's uh, the only other thing I can think of. Um, yeah, you don't have to have a shutter release uh, because your trigger for the water drops is your shutter release. It does it for you. Uh, yeah, I think that's everything. Now, probably the most important setting you need to be aware of is the flash setting. Now, as you well know, the lower the flash power output, usually usually given to you in a fraction of a hole, the hole being full power for that flash. So you have one half power, a quarter power, 16th, 32nd, and what have you. If you can get your, if you can get enough light while having your flash set at, a, at the lowest um, power you can get out of it, which is sometimes only 1 64th, sometimes it's uh, 1 128th. And this new Godox I've got actually goes down to 1 256th. The point is that as those powers drop, the speed of the flash uh goes up to where i think the um i think at minimum power on this godox the duration of the flash is something like one thirty thousandth of a second i might be wrong on that don't don't hold me to that number but it's it's short uh, and that's what freezes the action. So the shutters, it doesn't matter how long the shutter's open for, really, because you want to do this in a fairly dark room. I'm going to have to turn this light off. The darker the room, the the purer the light. And Oh, that's what I was going to say uh, with, the, um, uh, with the whole light problem. The, uh, the, the shutter speed doesn't really make any difference uh, unless you're trying to uh, gather ambient light so so long as you're so long as when you take a picture without the flash it's completely black you're fine because you want the only light that's getting into this image coming through that that screen and you don't have to use any of this stuff if you don't want to use the plate of glass and the uh, the colored uh, gel that I put over it, you can simply put the, the flashes one on either side of the where the dripping's going on and adjust the power from there. And that that oftentimes is, is just as good. Um, though you still definitely need to keep the power low. If you don't have enough light, when uh, when you're on one 128th power, move the flash closer. Uh, don't turn the power up because that will slow the flash duration down. If you want to use studio strobes, which I almost did uh, for this, and then I thought, no, that that's not what most people would probably do. Uh, I I would set them up with a big soft box and do exactly this thing just position the soft box behind the glass and shoot through the water drop how do you like my new hat <laughs> it's a ceiling fan so there's one thing i forgot to uh forgot to even mention and that was the uh, liquid that you use this is called water drop uh, collision photography but by no means is that the only liquid you can use. There's, there's things that you can do. There are things that you can add to the water to thicken it. And uh, then there are liquids that you can use that are thicker. And they all give different kind of looks. Um, the One of the most popular to use is, is milk because milk's got fat in it or the kind you need to use for this and it really the blobules hold together beautifully and they have this, this amazing shiny surface that catches little highlights um, and it the the splashes you get with milk are just completely different from water so that's one to try you can mix glycerin into to your um, liquid 
just melt a little packet of glycerin in there. That's always made me a bit nervous. I'm afraid it'll turn into jelly in the um, in that spigot valve thing, and I'm sure that would cost a fortune to fix. What I have done, just to kind of let my hair down, seeing as it's the weekend, is I put food coloring in my water. So the liquid that you place in the, uh, in the dripper canister at the top here is going to be the color of the, the water drops, obviously. They will be red, but they're tiny, so they won't be very red. Uh, I didn't put very much food coloring in there, but just a few, a, a few little dribbles of, of this stuff that you can get at the supermarket for, I think, you know, two or three dollars maybe for a box of different colors. Um, I've got a broad selection of them here. There's a, sounds like there's a helicopter landing in my back garden. It went, went on over. Anyway, very important, the liquid in your bottom container is going to be the color of the, the spike. So uh, if you want to have one color spike hitting a different color drop from above, then uh, yeah, certainly you can put a different color liquid down here. While using two different colors can give you some really cool uh, effects, what happens is before long, like after one or two drops, the liquid in the bottom container becomes kind of just dirty looking brown uh, from the mixed colors. So you have to constantly change your water out if you're going to do that. We're going to take just a few pictures set up like this and then um, and then I'll go get some milk. I have to go out and get milk because I don't like drinking it, so I don't have any. Uh, but I'll go get some uh, to show you the difference uh, with milk. So let's start by uh, taking a few pictures and see what we get. Well, I hope you can hear me uh, yammering away here and I hope there's enough light for you to see what's happening. But this is the, the procedure I told you about. I'll prime the camera by hitting the shutter release one time. I added a second light because um, there wasn't quite enough light just with the backlight. And then when I hit this little black button, it sets the whole sequence in operation. Fantastic. I'll flash these up on the screen as we go along. Let's move the light in a little bit. And it, it's really that simple. And the uh, the more you experiment with it, the more fun you'll have. And uh, yeah, these are tremendous pictures. A couple of things about the flashes. You, you wouldn't think it would make a difference, but it's a good idea to, um, to actually use identical flashes. Um, these are not the same model, and uh, I'll show you in some of the pictures. There's a tiny little bit of ghosting, and ghosting will happen if uh, one of the flashes is not perfectly synchronized with the other. And uh, this is, I think this is probably the one that's to blame, uh, but either way, uh, you can get rid of that artifact simply enough. I'm going to also drag in the big softbox uh, and set up the studio lights and see what other effects we can get. And I'll show them to you in just a minute. Well, I've left just about everything else the same. The uh, receptacles the same. I haven't changed the liquid. But instead, I'm using a large softbox, which is just pointing straight down at the, at the glass. And then I'm using a studio light with a snoot with a grid. I don't know if you can see that because of that other light, but it has a grid that's going to narrow down that beam of light directly uh, onto the splash. Uh, the settings are about one, I think one sixty fourth power, which is still pretty bright for these, but I think you'll be impressed with the, um, the results. 
there's no ghosting in them. They're, uh, uh, they're really sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the milk thing, seeing as we got all this mess set up and um, uh, we'll see what they look like. So I'll be right back. I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is I found some milk in the fridge. The bad news is it's probably been in there about a year. Um, I'm going to try it anyway. It does not smell good, so I'm going to have to thoroughly wash out this splashy machine. And it's got lumps in it. I hope none of the lumps get stuck in the uh, in the spigot. Sweet, keep sugar raw, baby. I got you good. I got you sweet. Got you on hold. My baby knows. Baby knows what I'm all about. What I'm all about. My baby knows. My baby knows what I'm all about. What I'm all about. Keep moving fast. Keep moving slow. Keep rhythm my Well, I think we'll call it quits there because it is 24 hours later than that last photograph was taken. I, uh, I was planning to finish this up last night, but my computer is not functioning properly um, and it will not run Premiere Pro. So I've spent 10 hours the day after that video was recorded just trying to get it ready to, to put up and I don't know if I'm going to need a new computer or uh, a new editing software. Uh, something's got to give. This is ridiculous. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the, the water splash and the cheesy milk splash stuff. It was fun to do. Pictures weren't great and I think I figured out part of the problem why. I think my dripper machine was letting go more than one drop uh, after the initial drop. And that might be because my spigot needs to be cleaned out. So I'll, I'll mess around with it. Maybe in a few weeks we can have a rematch and I'll come up with some other revolting liquid to uh, run through the machine. Uh, check out the website, alanwallsphotography.com if you're completely bored to death. Um, my podcast and, and other stuff is, uh, is on there. I think I updated some photographs recently. I'll be back as soon as I have a computer that will allow me to edit all the videos I have in the pipeline. Uh, I'll get them to you, but um, that's going to be largely dependent on the technology. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking the video videos. All of these things, I don't think they make a bit of difference to anything except to make me happy. And I know you want to make me happy. <laughs> I'll see you in a few days. Until then, take care. Cheery bye. I'm all about